like obviously with the with the whole thing that's been like the the work situation obviously that was limited in the last year and a half but uh, I especially the first two years I've been to open mats uh, either judo or BJJ like you just see how they roll and then you go to judo open mats um, you see how they do their newaza and their stand up and uh, I was in BJJ open mat and then there was this judoka that opened up a discussion and I found it to be very uh, interesting because I always talk about the two inter like interchangeably um, whether it's self-defense whether it's against each other uh, and he said something that it's far more interesting for a judo guy or far more um, beneficial for a judo guy to learn BJJ for his judo uh, than a BJJ guy learning judo for his BJJ and I found that to be very logical since uh, you know when I start in the stand-up with BJJ, like especially the the advanced one, like uh, purple belt, brown belt, even black belt, even if you get to do your sweep or your takedown and uh, really have them in a very good position once you land, not necessarily in their guard, uh, I find that that it serves you very little. Like if they're more advanced, obviously they're gonna get out of whatever position you put them in, and then they're gonna proceed to impose their own game slowly, then eventually get the win or they would just end up controlling you the entire round. So uh, a takedown in BJJ, like I'm talking about a takedown when it comes to BJJ, it's not just, you know, a takedown. It's, yeah, it's a split second, but in order to master that takedown, you've done judo, you know uh, how much time it takes to really craft a takedown. The, not only the repetitions, so many details, like a, a simple Ochigari, I'm still finding new details for it, uh, whether it's in the hands, it's in the legs, uh, how to get in, how to grip, how to trap them into it. Uh, there's just so much, like even Neil Adams, which he's now a nice guy, he's still saying, there's just always something, a little bit of detail you can add to a throw or something that's very basic. And I found that very true. And in order to really craft a good Uchimata or Serenage, uh, to take it to BJJ, which is going to barely serve you anything, in my opinion, yes, it's not that interesting, but to have very good escapes from pins, uh, to have very good transition, you know, you're on, you landed on top from a throw. It's a Uzari. You get to take it, you know, to win in Newaza. I, I found that that it's very, it's more logical, yes, to add some BJJ to your judo than to have, you know, to go through the, I would say, tireless amounts of reps of judo throws to take them to your BJJ. Even wrestling, same thing. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I understand what you mean because. <clears throat> Well, you know, like taking a, a judoka, and I remember my, my first coach, he was explaining to me that once you, if you're a judoka, it's very easy for you to transition afterwards uh, to BJJ or to wrestling. Because you already have like these skill sets that translate, that carry over very well. But if you try to do the opposite, if you come from BJJ and then you go to judo, it, it's, it's like, um, it's a whole new world. All of a sudden, you know, you have to learn so many things. And like you said, it takes uh, forever for you to, to do, actually um, be able to execute a throw in Randori against, you know, somebody who actually is trying to do the exact same thing to you. So um, where was I going with this? It's definitely um, easier for, in my opinion, for a judoka to transition, uh, for lack of a better term, down to, to the ground, you know, to BJJ and wrestling. Than, than the opposite. And I think that for, uh, for a BJJ player, it's important for them to learn <clears throat> some kind of takedown because, you know, all fights start standing, pulling guard is, is it, for, for, for sports jujitsu, it's, it's fine. But at the same time, I mean, you know, like uh, it's still kind of, it's, it's kind of silly in a sense, you know, that, that you, if, if all you could do is pull guard, you don't have any other options. It's, it's kind of funny, but you have to learn takedown. So what would be the solution in your opinion? First of all, when it comes to like the pulling guard thing, um, that, that's what I'm trying to say. If you take your judo to BJJ, that's not necessarily like, I'm, I'm talking about the stand-up, I'm not talking about the, if you, you do very good newaza or whatever, I'm talking about the value of that throw, like the time you put into that throw to take it to BJJ, it's not, Com like competition wise it's not worth the investment like on the street it's very worth it like you slam them boom it's over 
Mm -hmm. probably going to get into legal trouble, but that's a whole different discussion. <laughs> but what I'm talking about is um, um, like, for example, you, you're up against someone that has a brilliant, say, Z, uh, like a half guard or uh, closed guard or De La Hiva or whatever, and you, and you slam them and they ended up on their back with open legs. Like you gave them a gift in a sense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like all this trouble to perfect the throw and I ended up putting him in a position that he wanted to be in. You know, like mm -hmm. I, it's happened to me quite a, quite a lot. So you throw them, they turn around, they, they hook your leg or whatever, or, and then, you know, even like if they didn't get you right away, like obviously they, like you put them in a position that they want to be in. So uh, that's what I'm trying to, to say is that, is it worth it to take all this effort for a judo throw to take it to BJJ? Not really, but the BJJ that you learn for your judo, it is worth it because a lot of fights are ending up in Neiwaza. Just watch the, the women's Japanese team. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, takedowns, yeah, obviously you need to learn takedowns. Um, John Danner has said, uh, you can be a world BJJ world champion not knowing a single takedown. But when it comes to self-defense, takedown is a necessity. So you need to be at least comfortable standing up. You know, like I'm, the only thing that I know how to do is be on my back. And that's where all my abilities unleash. That's not necessarily, that's not a good thing on the streets. So competition wise, do whatever you want. It's sports. Um, if, if you're a guard player, um, do your thing. If you're a takedown guy, like for example, obviously uh, it can carry over to something good if you have a very good top game, meaning you're a great guard passer, you're very strong, you're very physical. Um, also, if you have very good uh, koshiwaza or hip tosses, that that's going to land you right into side control, you know, but if you're someone that's very uh, half and half, and then you're doing a takedown against a very good card player, eh, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. Yeah. It's a nuanced thing. Well, you know, like the solution that I, that I found for, for that me as somebody who started actually in BJJ uh, and then after that transition to judo, which is like the weirdest thing, because usually people, the judo, cause they, they, they transition over to BJJ uh, you know, because maybe of injuries, maybe they just, you know, want to have fun and, you know, it just kind of benefits them uh, more in a sense, right? Like, like what you mentioned <clears throat> is that if you throw somebody, you know, like you have to adapt your judo. <laughs> like if you're fighting in BJJ rules, okay, so what you have to do is obviously, you know, these guys are going to pull the guard. So <clears throat> let's say they actually do stand up with you, you sweep them. It's the transition. So right away when you, um, the transition between standing and the ground so as soon as you throw them or sweep them right away you have to be you have to be <clears throat> you have to pass the guard or you take their back at depending least, on how at they at least fall. yeah or at least land in half guard with a cross face like if you get their head and you're in their half guard that's pretty good to start with but um and and like maybe i i mm -hmm. yeah i i think i might have exaggerated a bit but if you if, if it's someone your level, like you say you're a white belt and he's a white belt or you're a blue belt and he's a blue belt, but you have the takedown uh, aspect and you have good guard passing uh, game, mm -hmm. a takedown is very good. But uh, is it worth it for just two points to do all this rigorous work? The, I think the, the main argument is the, is the rigorous work worth it. If he's eventually going to pull guard, there's barely no need. You know, if you're a very good guard passer, okay, fine, I'll do my thing. But... Um, if you're the same level and you have a very good top game, then yeah, obviously if you throw in, you know, the takedown aspect into the mix is going to help you obviously. But um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, uh, but yeah, it's far more interesting to take BJJ into judo and finish it on the ground in case you happen to score a Wazari than to go all this effort for just uh, for two points. Okay, you mean somebody who doesn't know how to take down, like who doesn't know judo yet, like a BJJ guy who uh, who wants to add, like uh, who wants to practice takedowns, and then who decides to okay, I'm going to learn BJJ because uh, you know I I want to learn how to take down. Yeah, I think I think that in that sense, it's uh, hmm, it might you're right, it might not be worth it because it takes so long to um, to to master. Uh, certain techniques in judo there's a lot like you have to uh you know and travis stevens mentioned this like if you do bjj you have to do bjj if you do judo you got to learn judo you can't try to like intermingle it because you can eventually but at the beginning you have to do 
you have to practice that art. And then yes, you... I, I agree. I agree. One hundred percent. I at first I tried to do both, and I was first of all I couldn't recover well. You're a personal trainer. I'm I'm sure you talk about recovery a lot, a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I couldn't recover, and two, there was just so much on my plate that uh, I ended up sucking in both. So uh, I would say get really good at something, or at least very decent. Uh, say a purple belt or brown belt in BJJ. That's a long time or at least a black belt in judo, then go to BJJ. But trying to do both at the same time and beginner at both, I don't necessarily recommend it unless you're doing it, you know, twice a week this and then twice a week that, but your evolution is going to be very slow. 